Okay, so um, something else I wanted to say is when they do that PET scan, the cancer cells rush straight to the sugar during the test. It's like a bait, you know, when you're fishing, you put the bait there and the fish go there, you know. So, and that's what happened when somebody already has cancer and they're trying to see where those cancer cells are, they go to where the glucose is. But if you starve the cancer of the sugar, then that's half the battle. And that's why some radical people, we just go straight on vegetable diet when they have cancer. It makes sense. Okay. So, and that takes me back to what the most percentage of your food should be vegetable, green leaves, green vegetables. If you are not filling your bowl, like a cereal bowl with green vegetables, lettuces, spinach, beets, kale, collard, green, you know, all of those green leaves, you know, non-starchy vegetable as they're called. If you're not filling a bowl every day, you're probably lacking in some micronutrients. And some of these micronutrients, one of my videos I did in August for the OFNC conference, I was addressing micronutrients. Please go and watch it. And another reason I think why some other problem is very, very rampant within our community is the fact that, you know, the, 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 the micronutrients as we were saying, your vitamin K, especially K2, is necessary to keep your vessels, your veins clean of crystals. And you get this from your green leaves. Your calcium, you're eating calcium, right? For your bone health. If you are uh, advancing in age, you are at the risk of osteoporosis, especially women, because estrogen is removed from our system in menopause. So you need calcium, you need vitamin D, you need magnesium and some other bone protecting minerals. However, if you have those calcium, anybody now, and you don't have vitamin K, then calcium begin to roam around in your vessel, in your blood, in your arteries or veins and cause uh, what they call atherosclerosis and plaques, basically crystals. You know what, what calcium is like, just imagine calcium is like crystals, you know. So it stays there, make your vessel to, to, to be narrow and again leading to all these cardiovascular diseases, i.e. stroke, high blood pressure, then followed by stroke and some other issues, okay. Now, again, when your DNA remains damaged due to lack of micronutrients, you begin to develop all these old age degenerative diseases. Alzheimer's is, Alzheimer's is this. And something else that I, I, I've noticed that is common, I've begun to pick little here and there amongst black community is the vascular dementia. The same principle basically that I've just explained, lack of vitamin K, um, your calcium is not that it's too much, but something needs to move it from where it is into the muscles and the bones where it's needed. Otherwise, it stays and roam around in your blood. And that's causing another problem. It causes another lack of another nutrient is happening. So I discover I was lactose free, I mean intolerant, you know, uh, a few years back and gluten intolerant. Do you know what, nature is so kind. And I, this morning I was thinking about that and I think God is protecting me. And I think God is protecting you too by listening to this, you know, because as I said at the beginning, this is like everything I've lived for all my life to, to push whatever knowledge and messages that I have uh, or I know, especially within the black and ethnic minority. We are not the only one, you know, different diseases are common in different uh, minority ethnic groups. And do you know what? Though there's plenty of sunshine in Nigeria, but people can still lack vitamin D because they lack something else. So their body cannot utilize vitamin D. And that's why when I was growing up, 
We notice a lot of, a lot of people with uh, bow leg is because they cannot absorb vitamin D. So, and that is going back to the DNA or the gene because there is a variant of gene that causes that. And they found this variant amongst Nigerians, even in the United States and in other parts of the country. So let's go back to the lactose, which is the milk sugar, the sugar in milk, you know. So there's something about uh, anything with sugar. It doesn't mean that you are adding cubes of sugar. It's just that that food itself, the body recognizes it as sugar when it gets into your body. And that's why you need to turn down anything that says glucose, lactose, fructose, you know, lactose in form of animal dairy products. You know, I became intolerant to that. And I haven't missed it since I stopped eating it. I'm not advocating that you should stop, but there is something that you should know about whey protein. Whey protein, you know, that's the protein within the milk. You know, it acts a bit like insulin, you know, like a growth factor, you know, growth hormone factor. And that's why in the fitness industry, they use supplement with whey protein to build muscles, you know, because it's making them big. And again, the problem, as we said, with insulin resistance, plenty of sugar leading to insulin resistance. It's not just about diabetes or high blood pressure and all of that metabolic syndrome. It's also about cancer because the sugar is feeding cancer. Insulin also is feeding cancer. So when there is plenty of insulin, you know, it's growing the cancer cells and feeding them. And that's why do all you can to diet down whatever you are eating that is deemed to be high in sugar, whether lactose, fructose, or glucose. Okay, now let's go down to statistics. Uh, when we were growing up, I said before, there are certain things that Nigerians have stopped doing or people all over the world. Not, this is not just about Nigerians because I appreciate the fact that some people have come from different parts of social media to listen to this. And I'm grateful, you know, that we're doing something and we're making a difference. Okay. And when you think, I hope you're thinking about your childhood and what Nigerians have stopped doing or what your culture, whether you are from India, what you've stopped doing, because of globalization, there are all these convenience food shops, eateries. You know, I don't want to mention any brand in particular, but they are selling fast food, processed food, and they are full of sugar and everything. I, I have some, uh, uh, you know, things here I could share with you about that. Even just eating ketchup, you know, the normal lasagna sauce or ketchup, you have about six cubes of sugar in your sauce, you know, let alone the actual food that they're serving it with. That's just a, a, an example of where sugar is hiding, you know. So let's, let's keep that to hand. And because of this shift in nutritional culture, you know, people are now thinking, let's start eating like the West eat. So we are imbibing the culture, the full culture of the West, which they've started turning away from since the fifties or even earlier. If you go and check on WHO uh, statistics, since WHO established some initiatives to reverse this problem that we're talking about today that is now rampant in developing countries, they've started reversing it before I was born in the West. Now, our eyes have suddenly opened to westernization and we're imbibing this. And I'm not just talking to black people, I'm talking to white Caucasian, Asian people from wherever you are and listening to this or watching this afterwards. You know, whether you're Western or you're westernized, we are all facing the same problem. And I mentioned about this bucket lymphoma before. Uh, doctor, a very renowned uh, doctor, uh, Dennis Bucket. He spent 20 years in Africa 
you find that virus that causes that lymphoma in children, the cancer. And another thing that he actually found is that the Africans, they never had bowel cancer. And bowel cancer was already on the rise in the UK. This guy was an Irish guy. So, and he began to find out why. Because these people were eating their own food. They were growing it, not processed food, you know, fibrous, good fiber. So fiber is like a broom that sweeps your bowel clean of all the to toxic, nasty things. So if you're not eating fiber by bucket loads on daily basis, colorectal cancer, bowel cancer is already very common in the black race. You can imagine how fast it can then develop because the pool, that's why they call it waste. It's not supposed to be in your body. If you are constipated for more than a week and you are sitting on it and not doing anything, the, the waste is already intoxicating and causing damages within your system. You need to get rid of the waste, the pool. And fiber will do that for you. Fiber will push down your pool to where it needs to go, reducing the time the pool spend in your body. So fibrous food, it's not only just for preventing cancer, it's also good for controlling your cholesterol, you know, two different types of fibers there, you know. So I, I also have already done two videos in this regard because that cancer issue is a big issue. Okay, now let me just bring this as the scenario to you. Now, Dr. Ore sent me, uh, no, not sent me. You posted something on Facebook, on social media this afternoon about somebody weighing 100 kilo, uh, eating burger, eating this, blah, 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 blah. Everything that they shouldn't eat, they're eating. And though there is some vegetables there, but they are putting cream on top of it. And that's where most of your calorie and sugar is hiding. Now, if you have, let's say, a slice, excuse me, a quarter slice of pizza and the calorie you have in that one slice, I'm talking of one slice, I'm not talking of a full tray of pizza. You need to spend one hour, 23 minutes to burn that calorie off. Just one slice of pizza. The same thing goes for your sandwich. So you need an hour, 22 minutes to burn just that one sandwich that is made of just one slice of bread. You know, when they cut it into triangle, that's what you have in your chicken and bacon sandwich typically. Okay. And some of these fancy drinks that we drink, a mocha, you know, macchiato and all of those. If you want it, make your own, you know, the way you like. Make your own pizza, put vegetable in it, use cauliflower as your base. You know, make your own tomato sauce and don't put sugar in it. Okay, so uh, let's leave that. There's, there's just too much to say about that. That's about the effects or the type of food we choose. So you need to rethink your choice of food. That is what I'm trying to say here. And uh, another thing is about, I put exercise on the list, you know, of things that we need to do. So we can shift all these empty calorie. Your orange juice or your juice has calorie, but it's not empty because it's got some nutrients. But your Coca-Cola on the other hand, your Fanta, your whatever, uh, it's just calorie, it's called empty calorie because it has no nutrients attached to it. So um, let's move on. Uh, we've talked about food, fruits. So one of the other things I was going to emphasize is make sure you find a way to do away with free sugar. You don't need no free sugar. Anything that has sugar added to it, please run away. Because we're already eating enough sugar from the fruits we eat and if People from Nigeria, Africa, India, or any developing country are watching this, and you are not taking anything else away from this. Be sure that sugar is the number one thing that is feeding most of the chronic 
lifestyle disease uh, that we are known for. And it's about time we change that destiny, that music. So it doesn't continue in the next generation and the generations to come. So uh, in a nutshell, choose organic because pesticide is another thing that is killing people. There's so many weird and wonderful diseases nowadays, you know, or if it's not uh, multiple sclerosis, is this, is that, this fatigue, that, you know, that even your traditional, your modern doctors, they don't know the answer to it. But the moment you begin to shift your thinking and your orientation about what you eat and you change things around, people begin to get better. There is a doctor on Instagram, Dr. Terry Walls. I've signed up for one of uh, professional uh, webinar coming up in, in a few days. This lady, I'm sorry, I need to be blunt, was a vegetable in a wheelchair, a medical doctor in America, a top specialist, and she was vegetarian all her life. And you know what vegetarian eats? Vegetables, not just the type we're talking about because they are missing the meat. I don't mean that they regret it. So they find other ways of eating meat. So you now have veg vegetarian meat, vegan meat, but a lot of them are, are, have been made with soya beans and soya beans are grown with pes pesticide. You never see soya beans that is grown without pesticide. So, and glyphosate or pesticide or herbicide, they are neurotoxic causing all these neurodegenerative diseases that we now have. And uh, uh, a research was done in this regard, it's not just words of mouth. You know, they find out that uh, many people with these diseases, dementia, Alzheimer's, were people that eat a lot of vegetables, but they were eating vegetables laden with pesticides. So choose organic. So go and look for Dr. Terry Walls, either on YouTube or the moment you put Dr. Terry, it, it will come up. She is now living a full life. She got off the uh, almost like a life support type of life. She's practicing fully now. She's an advocate for wellness and she's even more of uh, a lifestyle person. You know, she's doing research every day. There's lots of researches in America that hasn't come this way or to Africa yet. Yet, we are living in the same world, in the same century. And we, or let me say, people in developing countries don't even have resources to deal with all of these nasty diseases. So it's about time we begin to think about it. So another thing about the example of uh, Dennis Bucket, Dr. Bucket, uh, he now finds out that where him and some other researchers find out that in the 60s, from the 60s, the Africans now begin to shift their orientation towards food. They're no longer eating their own cultural food. They are eating, they are diversifying into processed food and everything. That's when they now begin to exhibit what he called Western diseases. All of these things, lifestyle related diseases that we're talking about, they were like almost a taboo in developing countries before. But now the developing country is now overtaking the advanced or Western country. It's almost like a competition that we, 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 we break this glass ceiling of disease before you do. And it's about time we change the music. So um, now, if you live in diaspora, if you were born somewhere else uh, in developing country, you've now moved away into Western nations. You are eating like Westerners, good luck. However, there is no difference between the way, actually there is vast difference because there are information within reach of people living in Western culture. It's all about self-discipline now and attitude and behavioral change towards doing the right thing. However, people in developing country, they are still embracing this westernization, this globalization and the nutritional change or shift. 
and they think is their status, like I can afford it. We, we, when we were doing medical mission to and fro, and part of this uh, data tells me that people are eating scotch eggs every day. So in scotch egg, you, you were well, not just scotch egg, the egg is good, but what is binded with and wrapped up in, it's not good. You have all kinds of things around that. But imagine if you are eating that every day, or even you, that's on top of your meals, normal meals, uh, meat pie, which is pastry and you have trans fat. You know, trans fat is something that you should never touch. If I die and they put trans fat in my mouth, I will wake up. Let's put it that way. So that's something that you shouldn't even be eating, let alone eating it every day. Now, a research in America, and this is like, the, the one that blew me the most. And that's why I said, bring your children into this talk because kids are smart. They are smarter than us. And they, they, they can be molded, they can make informed choice, you know, and they can even be the light within the family and change things around. In America, when they, they've now found out that children are now having atherosclerosis, thickening of plaques within the artery. Eight-year-old, 10-year-old who have just died from an accident. So they do autopsy on them and they find that their, their, their veins and their vessels are getting blocked up. And that's because of what we're feeding our kids, what they're eating. A child will only eat what you give them. That is the blunt truth. Okay, so oh, let's take this. Yes. Can I interject a bit? Yes, please. Yes, yeah. yeah, some questions are coming up. Okay. And um, I think it would be good if we could address some of those questions. Now. Okay. So the last thing here, uh, I was just going to mention probiotics and then we go to the questions. Is that okay? All right, ma'am. Okay. So probiotics, uh, they are fermented food. They are for your gut health. You know, that's food. It's the research that showed that some women from uh, some Eastern Europe, where they eat sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is a fermented cabbage that they eat on daily basis, like a bowl of it every day. They have no record of breast cancer in that part of Europe, just because of probiotics. Probiotics fight they fight some battles within your gut. And as we've already said, all diseases start from the gut. So don't let us forget that. Whatever we're doing, we need to look after the gut. I think I already done about two videos uh, on probiotic, you know, but I'm going to do another one from an African perspective angle. Okay, so this Eastern European now moved to Canada and they now overtook the Canadian with breast cancer because they stopped eating their food, probiotic. Okay, so let's move on to the questions. Thank you so much, ma'am. That has been um, very detailed and very insightful. I know a lot of us are grappling with, you know, the information and um, that is evident from some of the questions that are coming up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the relevant ones oh. and, and read them out. Yeah. Um, I have a question here that says, what can you say about other sweeteners aside from sugar, aside from refined sugar? Is any, any one of them safe? Okay, so if you pick up a product, let's say this is a can of sweetener, even honey, I have honey in my cupboard, uh, because when you look at different colors in the food groups, honey is in the yellow group, anti-inflammatory. And that's the, that's the truth. The same for turmeric, the truth. You know, so that's why part of what I should get to is eat a rainbow, different colors. But going to the honey or agave or stevia or whatever else, anything that you put in your mouth that is sweet is called glucose. So if you can do away with it, do away with it. You know, I know some people who used to, when I was working in the hospital, uh, acute medicine, 
uh, one of my mates from uh, South Africa, they would make a cup of tea for her and she would turn the, the jar of sugar like this, almost like the tea is half and she fills it up to the top with the sugar. By the time I've known this girl, this woman for 15, 20 years, she wasn't putting any more sugar in her drink. So those sweeteners, if you pick up a package and, it, and you see something that has O's, like we were saying, glucose, you know, just look at it and see the amount of sugar that you have in it. If you can avoid it, avoid it. But if you're going to eat one, make sure you try it in it. That is my answer. Because I still put honey in some things every now and then. I had uh, a drink before. I just put fresh lemon juice with hot water and I drank it, you know, and it was delicious. So, so many ways to drink liquid without adding any sugar or any sweetener or missing anything, you know, we got ginger as well you know, to change the taste board, to make it palatable more, because we're used to, our brain are conditioned to sweet things. So when you begin to cut it down, you won't miss it again. Okay? Thank I hope you, that answers the question. Yeah. I believe so, ma'am. Okay. Um, can the portion of food be explained in terms of rice, beans, amala, food portions? I think people are having a problem with that. Yeah. How much amala can I take? How okay. much beans, how much rice can I take? Okay. What so is a portion of? of a, a, portion, a portion of? Of rice or amala or beans. Okay. So generally speaking, uh, carbohydrates, there are portion sizes that you can have. Okay. So for instance, let me go straight to the points. The equivalent of your carbohydrate that you can have, let's just make it as blanket now for those of us that like swallows, you know. Let's start from there. The size of your fist, that is the portion size. There are some visual, visual guides and visual aids to help people understand and appreciate portion sizes, you know. So rice, if I tell you that the portion, according to uh, what is recommended, and of course, because as we said, carbohydrate equals glucose, glucose equals sugar. So the less you eat, the better. So the recommended portion sizes of rice is three portions, and that is 75 grams of cooked rice and six tablespoons full. Six of this in the portion of your rice, okay? However, if you look at the eat well plates from before, you have the rice portion, you have your protein, you have your vegetables. So your vegetables should, or your non-starchy carbohydrates, should be what is more in your plate rather than the rice and the soils. So if you want to think about it, like in case of yam as well, you have four small new potatoes in terms of the size. You know, those are like the size of an egg. Two, two portions, those are four of them, four potatoes, two small, the one they call Irish potato back at home. You know, the size of an egg you know, four of them is the portion. If you eat noodles, as I think has become a thing now in the black culture, noodles, one block, just one block like this of noodles, that's one portion and that's all you can have in terms of noodles. And pizza bread, you know, when you have a pizza bread that you open like uh, Chihuahua or Shimama or something like that, you know, you have, one of those at any given time. And your bread for your toast, two slices, that's all. Two slices, not a whole loaf of bread with 22 slices in it. Okay, so, and a sandwich as well, the same thing goes for that. Just two slices of bread for your sandwich in terms of carbohydrates. And 
The most shocking one, obviously, could be the rice and the swallow. But your breakfast cereals, for people who eat breakfast cereals, uh, I don't even know why you are eating it anyway. If you know the story behind those cereals, you will drop them fast. Why can't you have some uh, stir fry vegetable with chicken or salmon for your breakfast? You know? So let's change our behaviors. Nine tablespoon full is three portions that you can have of your breakfast series. The same thing goes for your pasta. You know when you put pasta in the pan? When it's cooked, nine of this is what you can have. I hope that answers the question a little bit. So the one you can have the most of, your non-starchy carbohydrates, you can put your broccoli, your cauliflower, your peas, you know, to make the bulk, to replace your carbohydrate, basically. And you reduce the size of those swallows. You can have a bowl of okra, a bowl of ewedu. You can have ugu with uh, spinach or egg oregano or uh, or any of those green, green leaves, cook them together. And please don't shy away, use palm oil. Don't use any of this new age oil because some of these oil were only brought in to discredit the good things that we have in our culture. Your grandmother, my grandmother, my great grandmother, I never see them cook with any other oil. And none of them died before they are well into their 80s and 90s. In fact, my husband's grandmother was 102, chopping her own woods, walking down to church and everywhere at that age. And she was cooking the local food, eating it. Of course, there are other factors related to the way we are in our generation. Stress is a major part of it, but that's not food related. Of course, it's contributory to lifestyle related diseases because constant exposure to stress, you know, drops your immunity and you can be susceptible to all kinds of these lifestyle diseases, cancer inclusive, COVID also. Is it any wonder that many black people you know, die from COVID, we are under constant stress. If it's not to make ends meet, working two, three jobs in diaspora or lack of amenities back in, in, you know, from where we're from, you know, watching over your shoulder, is anybody going to arrest you or your kids, are they going to do well? You know, all the layer of extra stress that other ethnic minority do not entertain. We take them on board as if they were.